Auzubillahiminashaitanirajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Dear viewers, this is Rufaida Panni from Bangladesh, Women's Secretary of Hizbut Tawheed. I welcome you all to this session. We are going to discuss the cultural struggle of Hizbut Tawheed. Islam offers a complete and divinely inspired way of life for humanity. Therefore, Islam does not impose any regulation that restricts cultural activities. In the Quran, Allah has not explicitly declared music as forbidden. He has forbidden intoxicants, gambling and dishonesty. He states, say, my Lord has only forbidden immoralities, what is apparent of them and what is concealed, and sin and oppression without right, and that you associate it with Allah, for which he has not sent down authority, and that you say about Allah that which you do not know. This verse indicates that Allah has prohibited only indecent and sinful activities, associating partners with him and making false claims about him. Islam as a complete way of life encourages individuals to live ethically, justly and in accordance with Allah's guidance while respecting the diverse aspects of culture. Therefore, any action that involves obscenity violates Allah's clear instructions or associates partners with Allah cannot be considered acceptable in Islam. In pre-Islamic Arabian culture, there was widespread occurrence of obscenity. However, Allah has prohibited all forms of obscenity in the Quran. As a messenger, the last messenger of Allah diligently worked to eradicate obscenity from every aspect of life. He particularly focused on eliminating these obscenities and disregard for Allah's sovereignty prevalent during the era of ignorance, including within artistic discussions. However, music and dance were not banned. On the contrary, the last messenger of Allah encouraged joyous celebrations with drums during weddings, Eid festivals, and even singing and playing music. Numerous instances from his biography and the Hadith collections demonstrate his approach, which his book Tawheed highlights as examples to present before people. We are now presenting a few of these examples. Even in the presence of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, during the celebrations of companions' weddings or other festive occasions in Medina, drumming and singing would take place. The Messenger of Allah stated, announce this marriage, hold it in the mosque and beat the duff for it. Rubai bint Muawid ibn Afra radiallahu anha, a female companion of the last Messenger of Allah, on the day following my wedding night, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam came to me and sat on my bed, just like you. At that time, Young girls were beating the duff and singing about the Battle of Badr where my father and uncle were martyred. One of the girls sang, Among us is a prophet who knows what will happen tomorrow. On hearing this, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Let her omit prediction and continue to sing what she was singing before. Notice, in this incident, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not prohibit the girls from singing but he corrected their misconception about his knowledge regarding the future. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was indeed the busiest figure in human history. Within just nine years, he organized 107 military campaigns, both major and minor. He brought about a monumental transformation in every aspect of human life spearheading a great revolution. Therefore, he rarely had leisure time to indulge in any past time pleasures. Nonetheless, during moments of relaxation at home or after returning from battles, he was seen listening to songs for entertainment with his companions. Upon his arrival in Medina and during the construction of the Messenger of Allah's mosques, he engaged in singing to enhance the work spirit and boost the morale of the workers. He and his wife joined in singing. In the songs they would say, Oh Allah, the blessings of the hereafter are indeed the true blessings. Assist the Ansar and the Mujahirun. During the era of ignorance, Jahiliya, singing and obscenity were deeply intertwined in Arabian culture. 
As a result, many companions began to mistakenly associate singing with immorality or sinful deeds. However, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam corrected this misconception. On the occasion of a national Arab festival, Buat Day, two girls were playing the duff and tambourine, singing in the messenger of Allah's house. Aisha radiallahu anha was listening to the singing. At that moment, Aisha's father, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, entered the house and expressed disapproval towards Aisha. Seeing this, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa turned towards Abu Bakr and said, Abu Bakr, leave them, for every nation has its festival and this is our festival. Aisha radiallahu anha used to foster and raise a young girl. Later, she arranged the girl's marriage to one of the Ansar companions. After the event, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa inquired from Aisha, Have you sent the girl to her husband's house? Aisha said, Yes. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa further questioned her, Did you send any girl with her who can sing and entertain them? Aisha radiallahu anha said, No. Rasulullah in that context said that, You know that the Ansars are very fond of entertainment and singing. In another hadith, Abu Buraira radiallahu anhu narrated that during the return from a battle, a dark-skinned woman companion approached Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam and said, O Messenger of Allah, I had made a vow that if Allah brings you safely back from the battle, I will come before you playing the tambourine and singing. Rasulullah replied, If you have made a vow, then fulfill it. The woman then began to play the tamarind and sing in the presence of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Throughout the past few centuries, these chapters of Islamic history have been concealed. Instead, such fatwas have been propagated that claim singing, music, painting, dancing, acting, sculpture, and theater construction are all forbidden in Islam. <laughs> Those who engage in these activities will be condemned to hellfire. By imposing thousands of prohibitions on art and culture, they have transformed Islam into a joyless and monotonous religion. They have placed the thorns of prohibitions at every step of life. Of course, within the realm of fatwa issuing, the subject remained restricted. Alongside, this revolutionary extremism has also emerged. The alleged fatwas of the clerics have led to the sacrifice of many artists and cultural workers in the name of the religion. Bomb attacks have occurred during progressive and secular events. Observing these, the enthusiasts of culture are growing increasingly skeptical about Islam and are trying to distance themselves from the religion as much as possible. Meanwhile, a sense of guilt is deepening with them, urging them to avoid religious observations. This has amalgamated with radical extremism. Looking at such occurrences, it is evident that a significant number of individuals having a distorted understanding of Islam's true history and principles related to culture. This ignorance is obstructing their intellectual development. If they could overcome this, their involvement in the field of arts and culture could significantly enrich human civilization. However, it is seen that many, even at the end of their careers, bid farewell to the realms of dance, music, acting, and other artistic expressions. Their departure from the artistic arena is often accompanied by a sense of repentance. Now, Hizbut Tawheed is striving to create a distinct cultural movement across the country. With this goal in mind, Hezbut Tawheed has organized various cultural events including many eminent artists, writers, composers, musicians and cultural personalities of the country. In these events, the artists of Hezbut Tawheed are attempting to set an example through their presentations. Alongside, insights from guests have shed light on the ideals and history of Islam. In the cultural arena, this journey of Hezbut Tawheed was initiated by the founder of the movement, Imam Zaman, Mr. Muhammad Bayazid Khan Panni. From an early age, he was a devotee of classical music. 
renowned music guru Ustad Muhammad Hussain Khusru imparted him from training in classical music. With the aim of preserving the creation of the rebellious poet Qazi Nazrul Islam, Imam Al Zaman, along with his few like minded friends, established the Nazrul Academy in Magbazar. As a part of his Buttohid's ensemble, he selected a Muslim song written by Nazrul reflecting complete faith in Allah. He considered it as an anthem of the Muslim community. Without cultural discourse, human civilization cannot progress. However, the assimilation of destructive culture must cease because it dehumanizes and debases individuals. The principles of the monotheism and directives of Allah emphasize the necessity of establishing a healthy, virtuous culture for humanity. This culture will guide people to be devoted to Allah and stand against injustice. They will become selfless humanitarians, valiant soldiers dedicated to sacrificing themselves for the welfare of their nation. In this cultural battle, you are also welcome to participate. Thank you all. Thank you very much for viewing this. Till next time. Allah Hafiz. Salamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.